Hey guys, so today on Tactical JK, we're going to be installing the Apex Performance Power Steering Cooler. I'll be installing it on this 2016 Jeep Wrangler JK, but if you want to install it on a JL or JT, you'll still be able to follow along because the steps are pretty much identical. Before we actually get to installing it though, let's go ahead and talk about why someone would even want a power steering cooler for their Jeep. So your power steering pump is gonna keep a little bit of that power steering fluid pressurized so that when you turn, the fluid's pressure can assist you in making that turn. That's gonna heat up the power steering fluid a little bit, but when you're just driving down the road, you've got a lot of airflow and you're not gonna be turning just too much, it's really not big of a deal. Where it is a big deal though, is if you're going super slow up an obstacle, just sawing your way up on a really hot day, that's where your power steering fluid levels can really start climbing. If your power steering gets too hot, it can actually wear out the rubber hoses and seals and send a breeze into your power steering pump, which will kill it. On the JLs and JTs, once your power steering gets too hot, the pump will actually shut off so you'll lose your power steering. And apparently this is happening to a lot of people when they're out wheeling and stuff on hot days, their power steering pump will just randomly cut off on them. So adding a cooler in the system should allow us to protect our power steering pump and keep you JL and JT guys from having your power steering pump cut out all the time. So this power steering cooler is made specifically for Jeeps. It actually mounts on the ends here and it kind of goes underneath your bumper or right behind it. Actually though, it has mounting rails that go across the entire front and entire back. So really you could mount this just about anywhere on probably a lot of other vehicles besides the Jeep. Anyway, this is a triple bypass cooler. So the cooler comes in one side, goes to the other, goes back to the first side and then finally out. Just comes in right here and exits right here. And overall, I'm really impressed by the build quality of this. Apex calls it hammer tough because it needs to be strong enough to survive being outside of the engine bay, kind of in that bumper where it could be hit by rocks and stuff. And I've got to say, definitely got a lot of weight to it, feels really solid. And I like that it has the torque specs on the end. I know that's kind of just for styling, but it's a cool style. Anyway, I think that's about it for this cooler and sun setting, so tomorrow morning we'll go ahead and start with the install. Okay, so we've got the tires removed from the Jeep. I've got a few tools and stuff in that corner. And over here, let's go ahead and talk about what all comes with the kit. So we've got our power steering cooler itself. It also comes with some hose, two fittings for the hoses, four hose clamps, two mounting bolts to attach to our mounts, and this guy. So our first step's gonna be to remove the front bumper, but first, let's figure out where we want to install the cooler. I've made a cutout here that's two inches by three and a half, and these are the dimensions of the cooler. We can figure out kind of where it's gonna fit. So I think we're gonna mount mine right here, which we won't have to mark off anything, but if we did have to mark off where the edge of the bumper was with the winch, we might just wanna go ahead and tape that off before we remove it. Removing the bumper is super simple, and I'm sure you already know how to do that, but if you don't, there's four bolts on the back. I think stock, they are 18 millimeter nuts, but on my setup, they're 19 millimeter combination of bolts and nuts you have to remove. My bumper is a little bit more labor intensive since it's kind of got like a modular design, but still not too hard to get off. Next up, we're actually gonna have to remove the whole air intake system. Start off by loosening the hose clamp that actually mounts to the engine and pull that part of the air intake off. Next, we can remove these two 10 millimeter bolts on the side of the air intake and remove the rubber tube that's kind of clamped into the side. We can then remove the top piece of the air box and push that whole section off to the side and remove the bottom piece of the air box by just pulling up with a little bit of force. Okay, so we've got the bumper removed, we've got the air intake, and now we can get a good look at how this is gonna work. We're gonna be tapping into this line right here. This is our low pressure. We're gonna cut off all the tubing from there. So all this tubing that goes down across the bottom of the Jeep and it comes back in here. And I'm not even gonna to try to point it out to you. The moral of the story is that we can't get there without removing the inner fender liners. So time to remove the inner fenders. Removing the inner fender liners is gonna depend on what setup you have. I kinda of have a combo of stock fender and inner fender liner. So I need to remove the 10 millimeter bolts all across the top, pull the actual fender away from the Jeep and remove the inner fender liner. So now we have access to the tube we were trying to get to. Let me zoom out. We're under the fender. 
and the tube is right here. So after taking another look, if I remove the coolant reservoir right here, I could probably get down there enough to cut the tube and do everything we need to do, but I still think removing the inner fender is the best option. Now on the next step, we actually get to start cutting. We're gonna be cutting this line right here and draining all the power steering fluid out of the Jeep. I'm gonna go ahead and bend it kinda of into this bucket a little bit so that we won't get any spills outside of our spill bucket. The instructions say to use a small tube cutter to cut this. I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna be using a set of bolt cutters. So the bolt cutter method kind of pinched off the pipe, so we got a really slow drip. I tried to help it by sawing at the bottom of one of the tubes, but it definitely did work, and we've got most of the power steering fluid out of the Jeep. The next step is to go ahead and remove all the rest of that tubing. Starting at the driver's side, I cut the line with bolt cutters, and then I chopped off the lower end of the rubber tubing with a box cutter. Next, I pried off the plastic retainer clip and went ahead and removed all the line from the driver's side. I broke out the bolt cutters again to remove the bottom portion of the line from the passenger side, and then I finished the job by disconnecting the line from the power steering reservoir and removing all that was left. So here's a look at all the lines we cut out just for another visual. That's the part on the driver's side that we cut, goes down across where the bumper mounts, and then back up and that's the part we disconnected from the reservoir. Now we can finally talk about mounting this thing up. On 2012 through 18 JKs, we're gonna have this vacuum pump which is right in the way. For my location, the vacuum pump just needs to be a little bit further down. To do this, I removed the bolts and then set the vacuum pump on the bottom of the bracket and then reinserted the bolts upside down with some washers as spacers. And finally, we can go ahead and mount up the brackets. I'm gonna be mounting mine through this pre-existing hole in the frame but you could just as easily drill a hole and mount your bracket there. I'm just gonna be hand tightening mine right now and we'll come back and torque it down once we get the cooler into place. So now we can finally install the cooler and all the tubing. The order that you do the next few steps is gonna depend on where you mount it. For me, I've gotta route the driver's side tube in a small gap between the vacuum pump and the vacuum pump bracket. So I think it's gonna be easiest for me to go ahead and mount this to the power steering cooler before mounting the power steering cooler to the Jeep. First up, I'm gonna go ahead and install the driver's side hose fitting. An 18 millimeter socket will fit over this hose fitting and we'll wanna to torque that down to 100 inch pounds. Next, we can connect the hose to the driver's side of the power steering cooler using a hose clamp and then set the power steering cooler into place. Once we get it in the right location, we'll wanna make sure each of the four mounting bolts are pushed all the way to the back of their brackets and then tighten them with a 10 millimeter socket. The torque spec on these is also gonna be 100 inch pounds. From there, I went ahead and tightened the brackets to the Jeep using a 17 millimeter wrench and a 14 millimeter socket, and I torqued those down to 30 foot-pounds. And finally, we can install the passenger side hose fitting. With the way I'm mounting my cooler, this hose fitting actually pokes through the bottom of the bracket to the cooler, so it's important to have the cooler in place before installing it. And that's our cooler installed and looking good. I'm really happy with the way that's fitting, and there's plenty of room between it and the vacuum pump. By the way, I went ahead and removed the grill just to make that a little bit easier. And next step is to start routing the tube and I think we'll start with the driver's side. My driver's side line makes a 180 after leaving the cooler, goes up above the sway bar and follows the vacuum lines inside the engine bay. From there, it routes over to where we initially cut the hose on the factory line. Next, I trimmed our hose to the size it would need to be to meet that factory connection, being sure to leave a little slack in the line as the instructions recommend. Then I connected the two hoses together using a double-ended hose fitting and two hose clamps. This was made a lot easier by the fact that we cut very low on the factory rubber hose when we initially cut it, and therefore left most of it in the Jeep. Moving on to the passenger side, I attached what was left of the hose to the reservoir, and then ran the tube down to the power steering cooler, being careful to avoid where the air box will sit once we reattach it. I then trimmed off the excess hose we had and connected it to the power steering cooler. So we've got everything installed and now it's time to refill the system and bleed it. At the end of this, we're gonna have to start the engine, so I've gone ahead and reinstalled the air intake. In the instructions, Apex says to use a high grade pure synthetic power steering fluid and they've got a few options listed. I picked this one up at AutoZone for $30, but I saw it and the other options for cheaper on Amazon. So I'll have all those linked down below in case you're ordering one of these and wanna go ahead and get your fluid. 
So first up, we actually have to get all the fluid back in the Jeep. So fill up the reservoir to max, then go inside the Jeep and wiggle the wheel a little bit to the left and right. This will send fluid through the system and you'll notice the fluid in the reservoir start to go down. After about five or six little cranks of the steering wheel, you'll have to refill it. And I had to do this cycle about six times before the fluid level quit going down when I was wiggling the wheel back and forth. So once the fluid level quits going down with each of the little cranks, we can start actually bleeding the system by turning the wheel all the way locked to the left and then all the way locked to the right. As we do this, you'll notice a lot of bubbles start popping up in the reservoir. And our goal is to keep going to the left and to the right, lock to lock until no bubbles appear for a while. For me, this probably took 50 or 60 lock to lock rotations. One thing to note is that you need to do this slow because if you go super fast, the fluid level will actually flow up and out of the reservoir. Also, I'll let you know that I'm not an expert at this. I'm just following the steps I watched on a YouTube video and read online. So feel free to do your own research. I'm just showing you what I did. Anyway, after that, we're gonna actually turn on the engine. And when we turn it on, we wanna have someone else looking in the reservoir to see if there's any bubbles. If no bubbles appear, we should be done. But if a few bubbles appear, you're gonna to wanna to shut off the engine and go lock to lock a few more times. I didn't see any bubbles in mine, but just to be sure, I turned off the engine and went lock to lock 25 more times and then called it good. Also, by the end of this, I had used my entire one liter can of coolant and the fluid level was sitting right above min, so I could probably use a little bit more. At this point, it was starting to get dark, so I set out to install the inner fender and front bumper, and tomorrow morning, we'll see how everything fits. And here's our look at everything installed. We've got about an inch in between the vacuum pump and the power steering cooler and another inch in between the grill and the power steering cooler. It tucks in pretty far under the grill so you can't really see it from the top. And it also doesn't make any contact with the bumper so I'm pretty happy with that. All right, and that's gonna be just about it for the install. Huge thanks to Apex Performance for sending this out. I'll have them linked down below, and I know they're working on more cool Jeep stuff, so hopefully we'll see them some more in the future. Anyway, be sure to like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe if you like Jeep stuff, and I'll catch you on the next one.